In this tutorial, we're going to go through the general approach to interpreting and presenting a chest x-ray. From my experience, chest x-rays are by far the most common form of imaging to come up in exams and in the foundation years, so it is important to take a systematic approach to interpreting a chest x-ray. Before I go any further, I'd like to thank Radiopedia for allowing us to use images from their huge bank uh, to develop this course. Radiopedia certainly is uh, the best radiology resource I have ever used, and there is a huge amount of useful content on there that I certainly recommend that you check out. First and foremost, it's important to double check the patient's details to make sure you're looking at the correct images. In busy emergency departments where multiple tabs are open on a computer, uh, images can easily be mistaken if attention isn't paid to the patient details. So that's the first thing that you should check. And then you should review the image quality, which is broken down into rotation, inspiration, projection, and exposure. And we'll go on to talk about this a little later. So the structure for interpreting a chest x-ray can be broken out down into its own A to E approach. So firstly, you look at the airways, meaning the trachea and the bronchi. You're primarily looking for any deviation in the position of the trachea. If it is not in the midline, you should start thinking about the various forces that may be pushing or pulling it out of position. Then you move on to the structures that are involved in breathing, which are the lungs and the pleura. Examples of features that you may note include areas of increased opacification and the absence of lung markings. Moving on to C, you take a look at the appearance of the heart. You want to make note of the cardiothoracic ratio, which is the ratio of the width of the heart compared to the width of the thorax. A raised cardiothoracic ratio is often seen in patients with heart failure. It's important to also trace the heart borders because um, obscuring of the heart borders may be suggestive of retrocardiac masses or consolidation. The D stands for diaphragm. You want to have a look at the shape of it. It may be flattened in uh, patients with COPD who have hyperinflated lungs, or you may notice that one hemidiaphragm looks raised compared to the other. You should have a look at the costophrenic angles to see whether they can be delineated. Pleural effusions can cause blunting of the costophrenic angles. It's important to look under the diaphragm for the presence of a rim of air. An erect chest x-ray may sometimes be performed in patients presenting with, a, with an acute abdomen, um, to check for pneumoperitoneum, which would be suggestive of a perforation. And finally, E stands for everything else. So this involves looking at the bones to see if there are any obvious abnormalities, such as fractured ribs, and inspecting uh, any foreign bodies, such as pacemakers or implants. Assessing the quality of a chest x-ray involves commenting on the rotation, inspiration, penetration, and exposure. So first, let's talk about rotation. In a good quality chest x-ray, the thoracic vertebral spinous processes should lie halfway between the medial ends of the clavicle. So on the left, you can see that the film is slightly uh, rotated, uh, whereas on the right, it lines up very well. It's also worth considering where the x-ray was taken. So patients who are less acutely unwell are usually able to travel to the x-ray department and have a PA x-ray taken where they can be positioned appropriately with their shoulders flexed and adducted, uh, whereas patients who are unwell and require portable x-ray are usually more difficult uh, to position appropriately. Patients are asked to take a deep breath in and hold it when a chest x-ray is being taken, uh, but oftentimes it's uh, much easier said than done. So in general, the diaphragm should be at around the level of the 5th to 7th anterior rib in the midclavicular line. So on the left, we can see six ribs that are visible, whereas on the right, you can only see about four ribs, uh, which makes it harder to evaluate the bases of the lungs. Finally, you should comment on the penetration and exposure. So ideally, you want the x-rays to pass through the body whilst being sufficiently absorbed by relevant structures such as bones and fluids um, to be able to make sense of the anatomy and the pathological abnormalities. To assess penetration and exposure, you should look at the lower thoracic vertebral bodies and they should still be visible behind the heart. And you should also be able to trace the diaphragm all the way up to the point that it reaches the vertebral bodies. On the left, the film is a little overexposed because you can't quite make out the vertebral bodies uh, behind the heart, but you can see the left hemidiaphragm fairly clearly. Whereas on the right, it's a good quality film because you can see these vertebral bodies and you can also very clearly uh, mark out the left hemidiaphragm. When you're actually analysing the chest x-ray, the first thing you look at are the airways. So this means the trachea and the bronchi. But the trachea should be located in the midline between the two lungs. If it appears displaced, then consider the forces that may be at play. 
Uh, pathology that can push the trachea away from the affected side include pleural effusions, tension pneumothorax, and tumors, whereas conditions that can pull the trachea include low bar collapse, pneumonectomy, and fibrosis. You should also note the location of the carina. Uh, this is particularly important in patients who have had an NG tube inserted as the tube should bisect the carina and the diaphragm. Finally, the hyla are the roots of the lungs that consist of pulmonary vessels and the bronchi. Uh, they may look particularly prominent in patients with hyla lymphadenopathy. Assessing breathing in the context of chest x-rays involves firstly looking at the lungs. Uh, you should be able to see some lung markings, but increased opacification may be suggestive of infection or masses. A loss of lung markings is seen in pneumothorax. The pleura are not uh, usually visible, but you may note changes like pleural plaques, which are commonly seen in patients with, as with a background of asbestos exposure. Irregular thickening of the pleura may also be visible in patients with mesothelioma. Uh, and the presence of a very clear pleural edge with the loss of lung markings outside the border uh, is classically seen in patients with a pneumothorax. Assessing the cardiac shadow begins with estimating the cardiothoracic ratio. The width of the heart should be less than 50% of the width of the thorax, and an increased cardiothoracic ratio is typically seen in patients with heart failure. Then having a look at the heart borders, generally speaking the right heart border is in contact with the right middle lobe, and the left heart border is in contact with the lingula. Therefore, any obscuring of these heart borders may correspond with pathology in each of these anatomical structures. With the diaphragm, the right hemidiaphragm is usually slightly higher than the left and it appears uh, continuous with the liver. The costophrenic angles can also be visualized, uh, although inadequate inspiration at the time of the film could make them harder to delineate. As for everything else, it's important to look at the bones, uh, the soft tissues and for any foreign bodies. Abnormalities that you may know during this part of interpreting an x-ray include fractures, subcutaneous emphysema and aspirated foreign bodies. Thank you.